There will be an exhibit associated with the museum's centennial. It'll be a temporary exhibit, but it will chronicle the museum's birth and early years and growth, and it'll also outline what happens behind the scenes. Most people that come through the front door see the kind of the curatorial result. They see the exhibits and they get to do the activities and, and have the fun and go to the attractions and so on and, and get the whole experience. But what you don't usually see in any of our exhibits is how it's made, what happens behind the scenes. So each division in this museum will be profiled in this exhibit to give our visitors a solid appreciation of what it takes to run the world's oldest and largest military aviation museum. I don't think a lot of people know even what the foundation's all about, but it really has been a fantastic partnership between the, the foundation and the museum. The foundation actually has been instrumental in all of the building, all the expansion uh, of this museum. Uh, $110 million the foundation has raised and contributed to the Air Force for the museum. The fun part is, if you look at the history of the foundation in the museum, 1971, new building, 1983, new building, fast forward to 2003, a new building expansion, now 2013, 2016, the fourth hangar. So we're talking now about where do we go next? You know, what, what is the next expansion improvement that we need to do for this museum? And in the end, what do we do to help better tell the Air Force and now Space Force story? And how do we tell the Airmen and the Guardian story? And so we are, we're already envisioning and working with the museum staff on where do we go next. It's a real privilege to be here tonight to help celebrate the 100th uh, anniversary of the United States Air Force Museum, the, the National Museum of the United States Air Force. I can tell you very clearly that the National Museum of the United States Air Force is the Space Force's museum, and thanks for collecting and preserving that space power history for us. You know, this is just my own personal opinion. There's kind of three purposes to the museum. The first is really to preserve the history and the heritage to make sure that we have a record of who we are, what we are, and what we've been. The second is to tell that story. It's not just to preserve the history, but to tell it to those who have never seen it, a young high school kid who had no real connection to the military, somebody whose mom or dad had served in the service and, and to be able to see what they flow. And then the last piece is, I think, the preservation of that history and telling that story creates a connection among us collectively and individually uh, that builds into the fabric of the nation. And I, don't, I think we don't appreciate that enough is how it connects us, not just individually, but across generations and across cultures in that sense. And I think that's the three big things that the, the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force does. Airmen and Guardians, we are honored to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the National Museum of the United States Air Force with you. Throughout its 100-year history, the National Museum of the United States Air Force has led the way. Dee Dee and I got here with our four children, um, and they were, you know, middle middle school. Two of them were middle school. Two of them were in grade school. And they're like, "Hey, we hear there's a really good museum here. Can we go to it?" Yeah, we can do that. How long do you think that will take? Eh, probably a couple hours. So we get here, and of course, I mean, that was before the fourth hangar. This is not a movie. This is a mini-series, okay? And so we, we realized we're going to have to pace ourselves, especially with young children. The Memphis Bell, which you may also not realize, is a lot of the technology for the Memphis Bell actually came from the Dayton region. So at that time, that radial engine that's on it, it was unique. Trying to figure out how to keep it cool was a technological feat, and uh, the folks here in Dayton figured that out um, and, and got that where it needed to be. Not just that, but the engine itself, this very special engine, allowed that airplane to fly at uh, 30,000 feet with a full bomb load, which made it survivable to do the strategic bombing campaign. I want to welcome the family, because this is actually a family birthday party. So for all of you who are distinguished guests, 
we're glad you're here, but for all of you who are current and former employees, for all of you who are current and former employees of the Air Force Museum Foundation, for all of you who are current and former volunteers, we want, really want to welcome you because tonight it's about you. Tonight it's about the institution that you built and it's about the institution that you continue to support. So I want to thank you for coming. Uh, and I want to thank you for um, your continued support and loyalty that makes this museum a place that people continue to want to visit. So thank you for that.